So as of chapter 64 in Four Nights of Apocalypse, there is a very interesting development with, um, I guess, the re-reveal of Galland and Melascula, two characters that were, you know, part of the Ten Commandments and really prominent in the, you know, I guess, prequel to uh, Four Nights of Apocalypse. Now, this definitely opens the door for a lot of potential other characters to come back into the story, seeing as Nakaba, we see now that he is willing to reuse, I mean, he's been reusing old characters, but more specifically, the Ten Commandments. So this video, I want to talk about um, all of, of the uh, Ten Commandments and what I think is the possibility of them coming back into the, the uh, story, as well as if they were to come back, what their place in the story would actually be. Obviously, we see with Gallant and Melascula, they are in the story right now. So, I mean, there's not a lot of speculation there. And we kind of already, like, we're getting a little bit of tidbits on what their goal is or what they're at least what they're after. Um, but it, as far as what their main big overall part will be, and like, I, I doubt they're going to be as important as the Ten Commandments were in the, you know, in the Seven Deadly Sins. I think they're definitely going to be more of a side thing. So, we're just going to have to wait and see what they're after because... At this moment, I just kind of feel like they're just doing Arthur's bidding. I, I really have no reason to think that they have any of their own like goals or or, uh, or motivations outside of that. But as for the rest of the uh, the Ten Commandments, obviously there are some that make a lot more sense uh, than others to be prevalent in the uh, story than like say others. I, I think I'm gonna go off in like twos. I think that might be the best way way to do it. Uh, I'm going to start off with two. I think that people are really excited about or would really speculate to be in there. And uh, that would be Monspeed as well as Derriere. Now, Monspeed, I actually don't think he's going to be in Four Nights of the Apocalypse. While Derriere, I think there is a very, very, very high chance that we will see her or some version of her in the story. Um, Derriere, as we know, uh, Mal did use an ability that would, like, I guess, re put her soul into the cycle of life to be reincarnated. So to me, that means more than, than likely. Her soul was reincarnated probably shortly after that into something. And seeing as, you know, Four Nights of Apocalypse is 16 years in the future, strong possibility we will see someone that is more or less like her or similar to her or a similar kind of personality or maybe a similar ability at some point or another. I kind of think of it as similar to Kid Buu and Oob. Uh, kind of like right after Goku had killed Kid Buu, he made that that wish. And then literally immediately after that, he was already reincarnated. I don't think that the reincarnation will take like some long span of time. So I do think that there will be like a, like a 16, 15, 16, 17 year old-ish Derriere version in Four Nights. I think that's a very high chance. Um, and then but back to Monspeed, he just died normal. I mean, his soul didn't get eaten or anything, uh, but... I, I just don't see a reason to really bring him back, even as like a chaos version, because I'm, his body, I'm assuming his body would have just like faded away after he, after he, he had died, not really leaving much of him to kind of be revived, similar to Galen or Melasco. They both had pieces of them still there with Galen being, you know, still a statue there, even though he was just a pile of rocks as well as uh, Melasco still being, you know, a full on snake. So, I mean, she was very much still around. Uh, moving on to the next two that I want to talk about, that would be Grey Road and Fraudrin. Honestly, Fraudrin, I do not expect him to be in Four Nights, and I truly do not want him to be in Four Nights. A lot of the stuff with Fraudrin and his, like, you know, he's secretly Dreyfus and controlling Hendrickson and all that kind of stuff. I didn't really care for a lot of those parts in Seven Deadly Sins, personally. I know that there are some people that's, like, one of their, like, favorite parts, I'm assuming. But Fraudrin was just really weak. And, like, I mean, his whole growth to, like, actually developing some human-ish emotions and caring for, like, Rhea more was, was, like, good character stuff. But I personally just didn't care for Fraudrin. So I really don't want to see him there. I mean, he did get like uppercutted in, <laughs> he got uppercutted in half. So like, <laughs> I'm laughing because I, I'm remembering it as I'm talking about it. And it just, it's a funny image. But I mean, he, there's not really anything left of him to be brought back. So I don't think he's going to be in the uh, sequel either. Um, as for Grey Road, strong, high, high chance for Grey Road to be in the sequel. Like Grey Road was just in Merlin's test tube. Like she never died. Um, Meliodas just took her commandment for, from her without uh, Merlin even noticing or anything. So she should, for all intents and purposes, still be in the possession of Merlin. I honestly think because Grey Road, if you don't remember, she's basically a mutated Grey Demon, so it gives her like all kinds of weird abilities and all that and all that stuff. I think for Four Nights, I I really think Merlin has modified Grey Road instead of turning people into Grey Demons or turning them into demons. I think she may have 
like changed her or experimented on her to make her uh, be able to turn people or other races into the chaos monsters or the chaos beasts, whatever you, you want to call them. I think Grey Road has been very, very instrumental in a lot of these processes. So I really do expect to see her later because Merlin would have definitely taken advantage of what Grey Road can do. Or at the very least, if we don't see Grey Road, I do believe that Merlin may have based some of the things that, that the Chaos Knights use off of Grey Road. Because this ability that the Chaos Staffs have to turn people into monsters... I feel like it's so very close to what Grey Road can do when she like incubate humans and turn them in, in, in uh, into demons. I really think those are like really, really close. So I definitely think we are going to see Grey Road. And if not, there are influence of Grey Road for in, in, in the Chaos Knights or in Camelot. That's kind of my thing on that one. I would love to know what you guys think in, in the comments about that. Definitely let me know down below. As for the next two to talk about, that would be Droll and Gloxina. Honestly, I could see where people would expect them to be in the uh, sequel, but I really don't think so. I mean, these two were just defeated by Chandler. They both went out fighting. Uh, so, I mean, they, they had a nice honorable death. I don't really see a reason to bring them back. They don't have a lot of that innate hatred in them like the other commandments. They're definitely way more chill and kind of just were commandments out of circumstance, not necessarily because they are demons because they aren't so i don't necessarily think there's a reason to bring them back and then also on the other hand their story arcs are more or less over with sending king and diane back to the past to kind of like live through their past regrets and kind of see how they could have turned out had they not went down the path that they went down so i kind of just think that there's really no reason to bring them back i mean because it would just be weird to use them in the same way as melascula and gallon seeing as those who just the, like those two just hate humans and they hate Meliodas and they just hate people. So I don't really see a reason to use those to use Droll and, and uh Gloxina in that way. I just don't see a reason to use them. I mean if I guess if they if they were brought back, it would bring like more diversity to Arthur's chaos monsters, I guess, seeing as he could have chaos monsters or seeing as he has chaos demons with Galen and Melaskula, I guess having a chaos giant and a chaos fairy would be kind of cool to see. Maybe, I, but ultimately, I don't really think that they will be back at all. And then as for the last one I'm going to talk about will just be uh, Zeldris. I'm not going to talk about um, Mal or Esterosa or Esteros or Mal because I want to save uh, the Mal stuff for a video I'm going to do about the Ar Archangels. And so I I'm not really going to talk about him in this video. I'm just going to talk about Zeldris. I think Zeldris is going to play a very big part in the story at some point or another, whether it be through a child him and, him and uh, Gelda have or through him himself playing a role. I do think once the ultimate confrontation with Arthur happens, he's going to have to some way be involved. I just find it weird that like the leader of the demon world would just not be involved in this really big deal at some point or another. So I definitely think he will be in play in some way, shape or form. It's just hard. It's just hard to, to say. I even actually it's weird because Eldris is one of my favorite characters, but I do think he's probably going to take some some type of massive L. I think I think he might be used as like a measuring stick on somebody else. Like I think somebody else really strong will like defeat Zeldris to just kind of show how powerful they are. Like this is like way way out shoot like I'm, I'm literally shooting in the the i'm literally shooting into the uh, dark on that one but i i really could see that happening for zeldris it kind of sucks but I, I i could actually see it but i'm really hoping that a lot of the involvement of zeldris is through his child with gelda like not saying that they do have a child but i'm saying it would just fit really well a child between a demon and a vampire could maybe call it a la carte just saying i mean if you know you know it, it would just it would fit it would work so well so i'm hoping for that but with that that is kind of where i think all of the commandments stand on their place in the sequel if they in the, with their place in, in the sequel if they have any at, at all i would love to know if you guys agree or disagree with some of these down below in the comments like which ones make a lot of sense like dairy dairy or which ones don't make a lot of sense like frozen so that being said make sure you guys like the video as well subscribe to the channel for more content got a bunch of videos i'm still trying to put out i've just been really busy lately so uh you guys all enjoy the rest of your day and i will see you all in my next video